Hey everyone, it's Brian at Star Wars Celebration with Stig and Steve, my two bald friends. And today we were talking about Jedi Fallen Order, uh, just revealed today. Uh, we knew a little about the game, but we got a trailer in front of the entire crowd. Everyone went nuts. It was one of my favorite reveals of the weekend, and that's saying a lot, because this has been a big Star Wars weekend. Uh, how are you guys feeling, first of all? Incredible. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it was a tremendous experience getting to see everybody react in that room and just sort of show an outpouring of love for something that we've been working on for so long in that wave of emotion that hit us up on stage was, uh, I mean, it was remarkable. Obviously the game takes place right after Revenge of the Sith. Um, was there sort of, you know, it's taking inspirations from all over Star Wars. Uh, we heard references to the comics, there's some Rebel stuff, mm -hmm. obviously Palpatine's voice is in there. Was there a single piece of sort of Star Wars across Star Wars that inspired this game the most? Yeah, I think there were some needs that we had from a gameplay standpoint that we led us to the time period that we're at. And obviously one of them is being a Jedi with right. force powers and everything. But also this idea of like up against it all. And Order 66, post Order 66 just fits so naturally. And it didn't really take us that long to arrive there. No, we got there pretty quickly actually. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's a just like a really intense sort of provocative setting for a character like that to sort of live in hiding. Um, does that mean we're going to see stealth elements? It feels like sneaking or at least laying low from powers that be seems like sort of a running theme in this game? You know, I've heard that from a couple people and I can understand why. Um, but no, stealth isn't something that, that we're, we're featuring in the game. I mean, you can jump into a situation and uh, kind of negotiate the battle the way that you want. There's a lot of choice in how you kind of come, come across your enemies and take them down. But, uh, and you could potentially, if you wanted to sneak around and not get the AI's attention, I guess that's technically possible, but right. it's not something that we're openly encouraging. We want the player to have fun, the, the power fantasy of having a light, lightsaber and force powers, and stealth doesn't really fit into that for this game. It's more fun to swing a lightsaber than it is to just have it. Absolutely. Well. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, the Respawn to me is like sort of a, for the longest time was a, a sort of name that was synonymous with Titanfall. And when I think Titanfall, I think, giant things that you can get into and ride around. And when I think Star Wars and I connect those dots, I think ATST chicken walkers, I think, you know, ATVPs, <laughs> I think maybe Rancors. Like there are large beast shaped things in Star Wars. Have, did you guys experiment with anything like that? Are you are you thinking about anything like that? I would say it's okay for you to think about things like that. That's <laughs> what I want to hear. Rancors are awesome. Do you agree? <laughs> yes, they're awesome. <laughs> Rank cars are great. So was this the vision from the jump to make a story-driven, single-player Star Wars game? Did it ever sort of ebb and flow to be anything else? Never. Wow. That was from the very beginning to make it very clear we were going to make a single-player action-adventure Star Wars game, um, and that was it. We, we wanted to deliver on that. Um, we felt that that's what people wanted, and um, that's why we're here today. Yeah, I mean, the first time that Stig and team from Respawn came up to Lucasfilm to pitch, it was story-driven, right. action-adventure, Jedi game, lightsaber in hands, force powers, and that's what it's always been, like Stig said. Yeah, and to add that, too, I mean, I came to Respawn, and that wasn't in my background, wasn't multiplayer um, or live services or anything like that. So um, the team that we built, this is what they're designed to do, is make a single-player game. Now, uh, designing a single-player story-driven game, I imagine you're figuring out how to funnel the, the player from area to area and beat to beat. How does that sort of um, decide, the, I guess, the, the width and the size of the environments that you're putting players in? Were there ever any thoughts to be like, this is an open world game, or this is, you know, this is how we want, how long we want people to stay in each area? There was never any thought to making an open world game because that was just, we're starting a new, new team um, and we're you know, building it on a new engine and uh, we have to build up the team so we had to like really choose our battles. Um, but with that being said, the game is very large. I wouldn't say it's linear. I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't say it's open world. Um, it's relevant for the types of games that we've been seeing for the last several years. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it was just based on what's practical practical and what can this team really deliver on and not try to overpromise and not try to like be too ambitious to 
to make sure that we can hit something with really high quality. Cool. I hope we get to see more at E3? <laughs> Question mark? Yeah. Yes, sure. definitely. Yes. Awesome. Great to hear uh, Jedi Fallen Order uh, completely made my day, and I can't wait until November 15th to I so I can play it, maybe earlier at E3. Um, but until then, for, for all things Star Wars and video games in general, you're already in the right place, IGN, and thank you guys so much, and congrats on today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of yeah, course. Thank you.